Hello and welcome to Only Connect. And I've had a papyrus in from Imhotep of Luxor, who lives in ancient Egypt. He writes, Dear Victoria, love the show. We all do here in ancient Egypt. But why, oh why, oh why, do you always start rounds one and two by flashing up hieroglyphs, telling us that our lion has strangled itself with two reeds and some twisted flax, and our horned viper has drowned in the water right under the eye of Horus? It's just groundless scaremongering. Well, I'm sorry about that, Imhotep. We don't want to spook anyone, but there's nothing I can do. It's too late. The show is now known for its baffling and sinister characters. Let's meet the teams. On my right, Gareth Jones, a maths graduate who is frightened of spiders and suspicious of cows. Kieran Connolly, a software analyst who has seen the 1980s film Flash Gordon 50 times. And their captain, Jamie Fryer, a sports journalist who briefly appeared as a child extra in the short-lived ITV drama Sunburn. All graduates of the Magna Carta School in Surrey, they are the Barons. Jamie, you told us last time that after your first appearance on Only Connect This Series, you got married. Which made you more nervous? Oh, absolutely this show. Um, but, I mean, the good thing is that I've learned quite a lot for, about marriage from this show and vice versa. Um, so the importance of teamwork, the importance of listening, and it's the moments when you're the most convinced that you're the most right is when you're actually the most wrong. <laughs> well, let's see how that plays out this evening. <laughs> You are facing, on my left, Andrew Bevan, an information manager whose uncle in America is a member of the Royal Society. Andy McGurn, a social worker who mistakenly dialed 999 when trying to order a pizza. And their captain, Khalil Campbell, a magistrate who was surprised by a stingray on a nighttime scuba dive in Oman. All friends and co-workers, they are the colleagues. Khalil, this is your third game. What are your main memories of the games you've played already? Well, we resolved the wall, but we didn't get all of the connection. So we have to beat the wall this time, so bring on a wall. And we need to practice our novelty dances a bit more. <laughs> Lovely to see all of you again. Good luck. Barons, you won the toss, but you've elected to put your opponents in first. So, colleagues, please choose a hieroglyph. Twisted flax, please. The twisted flax. What is the connection between these picture clues? Here's the first. Blondie. Is that Deborah Harry? Deborah yeah. Harry, Blondie. Yeah. Harry, Blondie. Yeah. Next. Next. Oh, no, no. She was from The Apprentice. What's her name? It was Badger. The Badger. So Blondie, Badger. Oh, they. The Blondie and Badger. Deborah. From Wind in the Willows? No. No. Deborah Harry. Badger. Next. Rufus Hound. Rufus Hound. So are they all, I mean, the first one, maybe the first one isn't Deborah Harry, maybe they're just animals, Badger, no, it's Hound. De it's definitely Deborah Harry. Deborah Harry, Blondie. Blondie, oh, Hound. Oh, no, Chris, 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 I've got it, I've got it. Um, there. You go on at somebody, you, you badger somebody, you have a ha you hound at them, you harry somebody. So, you know, ways of having a go at someone. That's exactly it. You didn't need to see it. The last clue, Chevy Chase. They are words for various forms of harassment. They're sort of synonyms for each other. Very well done. Barons, what would you like? Uh, could we have water, please? Yes, you could. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Oh, it was a series of novels by Diana Wynne Jones called Quest of Angie. Yes. Okay. Seven Lives. Would you like to go? Oh, I need another clue. I don't know what the next question would be. Okay. I think it's probably uh, seven. Peter, oh, so that's. Obviously, the planet, and also it's where Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It that's is. where. Yeah, from. before Prefect is from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, no, is it the Cindy outside of Beetlejuice? Mm -hmm. Should we go for another? He lives on Beetlejuice 7. It's number yes. 7. That's, yeah, I think number, it's number, seven. Seven. number 7. Yeah, number 7. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Confident. Uh, 7. I'm afraid I can't make your connection work for all the clues. So there's a bonus chance for the colleagues. Do you know the answer? Uh, yeah, if you say the name a number of times, something bad will happen. That's right. I mean, it's one time in the case of uh, uh, one of the clues, I think. But saying their name summons them up. Who are those people? I'm not going to mention any of them. I don't need you. People prefer to hear from the teams. So talk me through the clues. Beetlejuice is a film. You have to say it three times with yeah. uh, Michael Keaton. Yeah, Candyman it's a Tim Burton also... uh, uh, story. Yeah. It's not spelt like that in the film title, but yeah. it's in the credits, yeah. Candyman, I think you, if you say his name three in the times. mirror. Yeah. Uh, yes, and how many times? Three. It's Candyman. actually five times oh, yeah. in the case of, of that character. Bloody Mary, you only have to say her name once. 
I, I really messed that up, didn't I? And uh, the first one I'm going to avoid <laughs> saying at all, though I'm not quite sure uh, that's somebody evil, but you're right, it's from the books by Diana Wynne-Jones. Mm. Colleagues, what question would you like for yourselves? Uh, lion, please. Lion. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Next. Next. Next, please. Right, he was. He's, of course, he the was prime a minister. president of Israel. He might have served twice. I think. Oh. Was he assassinated? No, he's, he no, he's, he's, he wasn't assassinated. Yeah, no. Next. Okay. Well, that's when he was. Is that when he was president? Is that when he was president? But he lasted a bit longer, didn't he? Yeah. Next. Okay. Well. No, nothing yet. No. Next, please. Two seconds. Um, the first of two terms. That's the first of their two terms. Not it, I'm afraid. So, a bonus chance for you, yeah. Barons. Was this the. I'm afraid that's too long. We are looking at the leaders of national unity mm. governments. Oh, Coalitions right. for a reason of national unity, and of course, the dates underneath are those governments. Winston Churchill, that was the wartime coalition mm. with Clement Attlee as his deputy. So, no points there, but you may choose a question. Barons, what would you like? Uh, the Horned Viper, please. OK. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. That's the function. function has. So, they make a square. Yeah. yeah. Should we go on? Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. Uh, next, please. Oh, they have. So the intersection is an upside down, and that's an so they're, opposite. They're the inverse of each other. Yeah, upside down symbols have it. Okay. If I buzz, will you answer? Shape. <laughs> uh, does the first one make a square and the second one make a circle? Yes. Ooh, one so they're inverse of each other. They're not inverse. They're symbols upside down. <laughs> so are these two things uh, when you put? Them together, they make a shape. Uh, well, that's true of all things, isn't it? The uh, symbols for them are upside down. They can make a square or a circle. I think I can accept that answer. They are, in a way. There would be a neater way of putting it. I'll bring up all the clues and see if you can put it another way. The, the symbols are just upside down from each other. Yeah, I mean, they're mirror images of each other, aren't they? So they're, they're mathematical terms, usually, so that the floor function is, you know, this way and this way. I'm not very good at describing mathematical symbols, but uh, if, you, <laughs> if you look them all up, <laughs> they are images of each other reversed, mirror images. Well done. Colleagues, what would you like? Two reads, please. Two reads. Yeah. It's a music question. You'll be hearing your clues. What do they have in common? Here's the first. The first time that I saw you, I said for goodness sake, that man's got the power, he's a charmer. Next, please. Any ideas? Yeah. Nice. Next. At least when I asked them, that's what I okay. was told. No scuba So I just no. took a hand that this digging next please I've seen it rain and fire in the sky okay, the shadow Anything? from the star two seconds oh I'm afraid the time has run out Barons you want to have a go <laughs> not really uh, we will guess at uh, birds that's not it. <laughs> Did you recognise any of the pieces? Nothing whatsoever. Did you recognise any of the not pieces? Not one, not one. Really? You see, I'd have known the last two, the Mountains of Morn and Rocky Mountain High. Oh. I might not have recognised the first one, halfway up the Hindu Kush, Katie Malua, and then Appalachian Spring, the ballet Mountain Ranges. Mountain Ranges featured in all those pieces. So, no points there, but one more question. The Eye of Horus, that swivels round to look at you, Barons. What is the connection between these clues? Here's the first. Oh no, this will be for me then. <laughs> uh, okay, next. Oh, so they, I think they've moved and come back again, but okay. I want to keep going. Next. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it's been something like that, but I'm loath to get this wrong. So do you mind if we go for the final one? one? Yeah. 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 Next. I have no idea. Is it where they're? Is that where they're from or? No, I feel like it's. 
Oh, is that us? Oh, no, I was going to get a nickname from. It's where these teams get their nicknames from. It's where their nicknames come from. <laughs> what are those nicknames? So Fulham and the Cottagers. From uh, their ground, Craven Cottage. Sorry, yeah. Yep. Uh, Rotherham and the Millers. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't you know Halifax Town? They are the, the Shaman, shaman. but spelt like that, Shay. And then Sheffield Wednesday are the Owls. Exactly so. And that ground, Owlerton, that was renamed Hillsborough in 1912. Well done. That means at the end of round one, the colleagues have three points, the Barons have four. <laughs> Sequence is time now, and colleagues, you'll be going first again, so please choose a hieroglyph. Eye of Horus, please. The Eye of Horus. What would come forth in this sequence is the first. Next. There's something to do with. That's how birds do the thing. So, what do they do in the last you phase? Go you re chew it, you re spit it, I don't know. Next. Acceleration. Re rejection. I don't know. Do you bring it up and chew it and start again? Okay, come on. Anything? Um, put it in now, so that's what I'm saying. Re spitting. Re spitting. Yeah, we believe this is how birds feed and it's put in mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that's not it. So a bonus chance for the barons. Re-swallowing. It is re-swallowing. Oh. <laughs> this is not a bird, but a ruminant, a cow, something oh. like that. So they oh, regurgitate, yeah. then they <laughs> chew, salivate and swallow, or re-swallow if it's the second stage of the process. Very well done. What would you like for your own question? Could we have lion, please? I don't see why not. What would come forth in this sequence is the first. Okay. The next choice noise. Oh, okay then. Uh, I don't know. That's ratchet. This is nothing to do with. Hello. I don't know. Awesome. It's a film, but. Yeah. I can't, make, I don't I can't see it. Can I just do this from there? No. Next. That's a book that's made into a film yeah, well, as well. Yeah, I don't know. But is it word, uli, s, 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 Michael Morpurgo. Is an acceptable answer. Please explain the sequence. James Joyce, Joyce. Ken Kesey, Laurie Lee. And M. -M. Exactly. The initials are J, J, K, K, L, L. And we wanted something by somebody whose initials were M, M. For example, Margaret Mitchell, who wrote Gone with the Wind, or Michael Morpurgo. Very well done. So you got that bonus, and you may choose your own question. Water, please. Water. What would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Spielberg. Um, E.T. was his first um, Jurassic. Jurassic Park. Go next. Next, please. Jurassic Park. Oh, oh no, it's, I know what it is. It's, it's the highest grossing movie. Um, yeah. Titanic. It was Avatar, and after Avatar it was... Um, was it one of the Avengers so films? Titanic, or was it yeah. Star Wars? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I think it was Star Wars. And then what? We're going to make no, some so Avatar, Chris. Uh, Avatar, and then um, Avengers. Keep talking. Avengers, Avengers Endgame. Endgame. Avengers Endgame is the right answer, and why? Highest grossing movie, the next movie to become... Jurassic Park was the highest grossing movie, then it was Titanic, then it was Avatar, then it was Avengers Endgame. Exactly, it's the highest grossing films of all time. But it, those wouldn't be the top four if you made the list now because other films have overtaken E.T. and Jurassic Park without overtaking Avatar, but they were successive world record holders. What do you think was the highest grossing film at the US box office on the weekend of the 19th of June, 2020? Gone with the Wind. Nope. <laughs> it was Jurassic Park and Jaws, and they were mainly from drive-in movies. Oh. Those old classic films were being shown at drive-ins. I saw the colour purple drive-in. How long ago? About two months ago. Oh, it doesn't feel like a very drive-in film. I mean, it's sort of 
harrowingly <laughs> sad. You go on a date and sit sobbing on the passenger seat. Mind you, I always do. <laughs> well done, you get those points. Barons, what would you like? Twisted flax, please. The twisted flax. What will come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. OK. Yeah. Next, please. Oh, golly. I don't know who he is. No. Do you know who he is? I don't know. <laughs> Next, please. Oh, oh, right, so James Watt is... Steam engine. Steam engine, right. So, are these... Do they design the biggest buildings in they... London? Oh, they or... could be, but... But I don't know what they're designing. Well, they heads of... I think it could be heads of the ones. Mm. I think yeah. Newton was one of them, wasn't it? Yeah, Sir Isaac Newton. <laughs> Not the answer, I'm afraid. Do you know over there? Michael Faraday. Not it. I think from your answers you all think it's to do with banknotes. Nope. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've picked the kind of people that would be on banknotes. It is banknotes anyway. Oh, it's uh... people that appear on the £50 note. Christopher Wren, then Hublon, then Bolton and Watt, and next, Alan Turing. Back to you, colleagues. What would you like? Horned Viper, please. OK. What would come forth in this picture sequence? Here's the first. Next, please. Thorn. Alright, so it's a stew, thorn. Next. Next. Stew, thorn. So that's yeah. a, is that sports night or screen sport oh, or Sayat. something? Isn't it the game? What? Isn't it the game? What was um, it? It's a stew. Logo for Sayat, isn't it? Oh, Sayat. Yeah, that's yeah. a logo for Sayat. Yeah. Thorn, stew. Alright, so it's a stew, thorn. Next. 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 Two seconds. <laughs> A picture of a chair. It's a picture of a chair. Not an acceptable answer, I'm afraid. Oh, Baron, do you want to have a go for a bonus? Um, it would be a picture of some people saying vows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, I suppose it could be. I don't know what that picture would look like, but I will accept that answer, oh, mainly because the picture shouting. I've got could be somebody saying vows. Are they shouting it? <laughs> well, we mean it to be a shout. What is the sequence? So these are all anagrams of the cardinal direction. So we've got stew, which is an anagram of west, thorn, which is an anagram of north, sayat, which is an anagram of east, and then vows. Which is an <laughs> well, vows would be the obvious anagram, wouldn't yes, of it, of south. And look, you can always see the woman mouthing vows. Of course, yeah. Uh, uh, there. So well done. You get the bonus and you get your own question. The two reads, what would come forth in this sequence? Here's the first. Oh, oh God. God. So, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, 19... <laughs> 1904 and 48. Uh, next. So these are gaps between the two things. So 04 and 48 is a gap of 44 years. So that'd be 34 years, maybe? Maybe. So, uh, Tokyo Go. Next. Is that 10 years? Oh, no, it's 1908, isn't it? 1908 to. 40 years, it's 40 years, 30 years, 20 years, so give it 10 years. So... Two seconds. <laughs> so, a gap, two decades. Um, uh, the 1998 World Cup and the 2008 European Championships. I have no idea if those events took place in those years, but I will <laughs> accept your answer. We had Duffy becomes Poet Laureate, Armitage becomes Poet Laureate. What is the sequence? Uh, so the gap between the first London Olympics and the second London Olympics was 40 years. That's right, from 1908 to, 1908 to 1948. Uh, the gap between Mad Max Beyond the Thunderdome and Fury Road presumably is 30 years. From 1985 to 2015. Uh, Rick Van Winkle went to sleep and then woke up 20 years later. Mm -hmm. And so anything that is a decade apart. They are events that took place 40, then 30, then 20 years apart. So I want to hear some event that is divided from the next one by 10 years. Very well done. That means at the end of round two, the colleagues have seven points, the barons have eight. <laughs> round three is the connecting wall, and barons, you'll be going first this time, so please choose lion or water. Water, please. OK, you have two and a half minutes to solve the water wall, starting now. Oh. OK. Kale is... Can you have curly kale? Yes. Oh, moons of Jupiter. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Can he meet? Io, Euro, Io, yeah, well done. 
Uh, can I meet one? What's the other one? Europa. Europa. Oh, and there's oh, another one. There must be another one. Is it Euro one? Don't know. Um, uh, Kohlrabi is a sort of leaky like vegetable. It's like kale. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. But I see anyone's in <laughs> Kohlrabi. Uh, what else is that? China. Oh, we've got Valleys. Yeah, Yo uh, Valley, Loire Valley, yeah, Red Yo, Valley. Napa, Red. Mm. What's the other one you said? Uh, Loire. Loire, Loire. yep. Uh, uh, the Justice Valley. Valley. Euro Valley. Euro Valley could be. All right. Oh, no, that's not one. Uh, like Euro Valley and... Oh, Leagues. Major Justice League, League yeah. Human League. League. Major League. Europa League. OK. And Major League. Thank you. OK. So, uh, what's, so Europa's gone, so Io, Ganymede, Callisto. Uh, Callisto. Any ideas? Uh, no. Nope. Napa. Napa, maybe, uh, yeah. Napa. I don't think so, because it's not oh. like kale. Oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Napa is a bit of a stupid one. <laughs> uh, oh, what is it? Come on. There you okay. go. Right, so. <laughs> Three lives uh, now. Red. Cabbage. Oh, uh, cabbage, Chinese cabbage. I think maybe Karabi is because they yeah. have potentially yeah. cabbage. Don't know another cabbage out there. Uh, so, like, Napa Valley, could it be nappy? Um, so, oh, a Napa cabbage could be a thing. So, maybe it's not valleys. Oh, so, there's definitely three valleys there. Oh, I well, think it is yeah, valleys. Yo, Loire, Napa, Napa, Yo, Loire. And okay, so, so should try nappy first? Yeah, go yeah. on. Lee cabbage. Lee. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Okay. Uh, I'd say Loyal. Napa. Is it Napa? I'm not sure, though. So it might come from the valley. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Yes! <laughs> so cool. Very well done. What about the connections? Major, Europa and so on? Uh, these are all leagues. They are leagues. And the next group, Kale or Kaylee or Kale? <laughs> uh, are these all moons? Of Jupiter. Thank you. They are moons of <laughs> Jupiter. And the next group, Red, Chinese and so on? These are the cabbages. Those are the cabbages. <laughs> and Yo, Loire, Nappy and Lee. Are these all valleys? They are valleys. Nappy Valley being sort of slang for a place where lots of parents of young children move. Right. Okay. So that is all the groups and all the connections. You get a total of ten points. Very well done. Let's bring in the colleagues now, give them the other wall, the lion wall, and see how they get on. Colleagues, you have two and a half minutes to solve your wall, starting now. Uh, English flame. Monday times, Bulldog, uh, May Grey, <coughs> Colonel Mustard. Colonel M Mustard is yellow, Mustard is May Grey is a okay. French detective. Kiss times, Monday. Colonel Flame, Manic Monday. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's Angles and Monday, Egyptian, oh, that's Flame. flame. Uh, Eternal Flame. And did they do a cover of Kiss? I don't know. Try it. Nope. Winter. Oh, yeah, hazy shade of winter, yeah, so... OK, the mm -hmm. angles on. So, Polish... Colonel. Are these colonels or uh, British? British mustard, British bulldog? No. Nope. Ten. Ten. Treasure hunt, ten mustard. What's Zazu? That's, uh... Bean. In some language. Three bean, three bean, three ten, may great, colonel, may great, time, Sunday time, Sunday kiss. Zazu. The zoo is a sidekick of some sort, isn't it? Times kiss is an X. Times is an X. Yeah. Um, ten is an X. Can be written as an X. Um, what else can be written as an X? Uh, treasure. treasure marks treasure. Spot. is spot. Is marked as an X. Yeah. Well, well Three lives. Uh, uh, bulldog. Is Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean. Oh, they've all been played by uh, Rowan Atkinson. May Gray Bean. English, uh, Johnny English. English, yeah. And one other. And then what's, what does that leave? Is, has he ever played Colonel Mustard? Has, has he ever played Zazu? Yeah, he could have done in a film. Yeah, Try a Mustard voice as one Zazu, of the isn't it? Try Mustard. But well, what would that leave us? Zazu, Polish, Dip. Right. Oh. So you've done Mustard, so that would... I mean, you've done seconds. Zazu. Yeah, so that would leave Zazu. Polish Bulldog. Yeah, you're just going to have to guess now. That's it, you've solved the wall. Very well done. What about the connections? Monday, Flame, Egyptian, Winter. Those are songs by the Bangles. They feature in song titles by the Bangles. Kiss times ten, Treasure. Those can be uh, signified by the X. They can be represented by an X. And the next group, English, May Grey and so on. That's characters Rowan Atkinson's played. 
That's right. Zazu is the hornbill in The Lion King, originally yeah. voiced by Rowan Atkinson in the first film. Okay, and the last group, Polish or Polish, Bulldog and so on. British. You're very unlucky. It's French. Oh, French you do mustard. get a British mustard and bulldog, but you also get French ones, French polish and French dip. Uh, but you found four groups. You gave me three connections. That's a total of seven points. Let's have a look at the scores going into the final round. The colleagues have 14 points. The barons have 18. Things will be decided now in the missing vowels round. Fingers on buzzers teams. I can tell you that the first group of clues are all seaside districts and their cities. Barons? Bondi and Sydney. Correct. Barons? Portobello and Edinburgh. Yes, it is. Colleagues? Coney Island and New York. Correct. Colleagues? Copacabana and Rio de Janeiro. Correct. Next category, they go back to front. Colleagues? Backgammon. Well done. Barons? Back up. Yes, it is. Barons? Up front. Well done. Barons? Battlefront. Correct. Next category, authors whose names begin and end with the same letter. Colleagues. Mary Chandler. Correct. Barons. Nora Ephron. Correct. Colleagues. Vladimir Nabokov. Yes, it is. Barons. T.S. Eliot. Yes, it is. Next category, nicknames of British monarchs. Colleagues. Farmer George. It's George III. No time to give me the slightly grisly answer crook back for Richard III. Those were nice days, weren't they? <laughs> but the noise has sounded for the end of the quiz and looking at the final scores, the winners and through to the next round with 25 points are the Barons. Very well played, well done to you. We'll be seeing you later in the competition. Colleagues, you finished with 20 points, not quite enough. I'm so sorry to lose you. You've done some great quizzing. You've been a brilliant team. Thank you so much for playing and thank you for watching. And I've actually had another scroll in from uh, Imhotep. He's written again, uh, he's come in late tonight, his TiVo box is playing up and he's missed the show. He asks, could we start again from the beginning? Well, we could, Imhotep. All right, for you, we will. But I sense it's going to be a bit less tense and more high scoring this time round. Goodbye.